Safety experts calculated more than 250,000 deaths each year are due to medical errors. So, the NCSBN is doing their part to address this critical problem. And what they're doing is they're changing the NCLEX questions and issuing in next generation NCLEX questions. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So, let's go. types of questions you're already familiar with the um, there's going to be six new next generation type questions on the NCLEX so today we're going to talk about the anatomy of the bow tie questions specifically all right so let's talk about that the bow tie question is a standalone question that uses all of the National Council's clinical judgment measurement model um, steps. There's six uh, measurements. And what do they measure? Number one, you have to recognize cues. Pick out the important factors in the case study or the question. Re uh, relevant data can be be from many sources uh, that includes assessment, client history, data collection such as labs, etc. So that is recognized cues. Number two is analyze cues. Why are the cues of concern? Connect the data to the client's clinical presentation. Is the data expected or unexpected? Put together what the data means. Where This is where analysis enters your clinical thinking process. Okay, That's the second step. Remember, the bow tie questions use all six steps. Uh, prioritize hypothesis is the third step. Rank the hypothesis, the client need or problem. Uh, determine the concerns and needs and their priority. You can practice this by writing nursing diagnoses and placing them from the most concerning to the least concerning. All right, that's how you can practice that. For those of us who are old school, prioritize hypothesis would be your nursing diagnosis. Okay? Now, what's the fourth step? The fourth step is generate solutions. Uh, old school, nursing process, this would be your planning. What is the plan of care? Use hypothesis to determine the interventions for the expected outcome. Okay, Use your nursing diagnosis to determine the action you're going to take. Which brings me to the fifth step, taking action. Implement the generated solutions that are based on the hypothesis that was formulated, addressing the highest priorities or hypothesis. And then the sixth step is evaluate the outcome. How did your actions help the client? Compare the observed outcomes with the expected ones. And those are the six steps of the National Council State Board of Nursing's clinical judgment measurement model. Okay, so that's how you answer these questions. Now let's talk about the layout of these questions because the layout of these questions are very, very different than we've seen before. So keep all this in mind that you have to use all six steps of the clinical judgment measurement model to answer the bow tie questions. Now, let's get into the anatomy of the actual bow tie question. How does that function? Well, it's very interesting, and it does look like a bow tie. The event, or 
uh, the diagnosis is placed in the middle of the screen. Let's use hypertension, uh, for example, okay? Uh, so you would put hypertension in the middle of the screen. And then on the left-hand side of the uh, block that says hypertension, you would uh, there would be the threat needing action or um, uh, the nursing uh, actions would be placed on the left side. Now these nursing actions, there's two of them. These nursing actions have a drop down box with five choices in each box. I'm actually going to do a question and show this to you. So the uh, nurse's actions or the threat, all right, what needs action is placed on the left hand side and on the right hand side of this block that says hypertension would be the recovery parameters are on the right. You know, these would be the things that you have to monitor, all right, like monitor lab or um, um, uh, ultrasound or uh, whatever the case may be. In the case of hypertension, you would monitor vital signs, right? So, um, so that's how it works. And it actually looks like a bow tie because there's three uh, columns to this question. All right. Now, let me actually work an actual bow tie question for you and give you an idea of how that works. Uh, let's pay close attention, all right? All right, let's open up this uh, screen. I'm using the Saunders book, and let's do an actual question. Let's go ahead and get started here and look at an actual bow tie question. You will see here that it indeed does look like a bow tie. In order to answer these questions, you have to answer, you have to pick the potential condition first, that's in the middle, then you have to pick two nursing actions, and then you have to pick the parameters to monitor. In that order, you have to read the standalone question on the left hand side, you have to pick the potential condition. You have to pick two nursing actions and two things to monitor, whether it be lab, uh, ultrasounds, or whatever the case may be. Uh, let's read the standalone case study here. The nurse is assigned to a newly admitted 49-year-old male client. Now keep in mind that when I tutor you, I'm going to help you recognize the cues and analyze the cues. For those of us who are old school, we have to recognize the cues and analyze the cues. This is part of our assessment, right? So, but for the purpose of the new clinical judgment measurement model, we're going to call that recognize cues and analyze cues and I will help you pick out all the important things in your case study okay uh, let's read the nurses notes 330 the client was admitted to the emergency department accompanied by his wife reporting sharp abdominal pain localized to the right upper quadrant now that's important okay pain is important uh, right upper quadrant. Think about your, what is located? What organs are located in the right upper quadrant? Right away, I'm thinking uh, liver and gallbladder. That's what I'm thinking. That's what's located in the right upper quadrant. So make a note of that. Write that down. Right, gallbladder, liver, right? All right, now, um, for the last three days, he has been experiencing decreased appetite, nausea, and a low-grade fever. Okay, now I want to take his signs and symptoms, his symptoms that he's presenting with, and I want to start thinking uh, prioritize hypothesis or uh, nursing diagnosis. That would have been, uh, that would be the nursing diagnosis in our nursing process for those of us that are old school. So I want to think about 
possible nursing diagnoses, right? Prioritizing uh, the uh, the NCLEX is now calling that um, hypothesis. It's calling your nursing diagnosis a hypothesis. I will help you th with this when I tutor you. So the two diagnoses that I come to mind right away, or the hypotheses that come to mind right away for me is alteration in pain and alteration in appetite. Those are my two diagnoses that I'm thinking right away. But I will help you with that when I tutor you. So we've done recognize cues, analyze cues. We've thought about our hypothesis or our nursing diagnosis. Let's keep going here. Past metal history includes cholelithesis. Okay, what is that? What does that pertain to? Gallstones, right? Um, gastroesophageal reflux disease, pneumonia, and type 2 diabetes mellitus. The nurse is reviewing the emergency department nurse's notes on the client to prepare for the client's plan of care. Now, that's the history. Okay, but remember to stay focused on the here and the now. And the here and the now is the pain in the right upper quadrant. Okay, so let's continue. What does the question say? It says select from the choices to identify one condition. All right, we have to pick the condition first. So we click on here. And we have acute cholecystitis, we have bacteria pneumonia, we have diabetic ketoacidosis, and gastrointestinal bleeding. Now, he's coming into the ER with pain right upper quadrant. The bacteria pneumonia is a history. The diabetic ketoacidosis could be from his history, and the gastrointestinal bleeding could be from his history. But we need to focus on the now. So let's pick the acute uh, cholic cholecystitis. Let's go to the two nursing actions uh, that we have to pick. When we click on here, we get a drop-down menu of insert Foley catheter. No, because nothing said he's having trouble with his urine, right? Administer pain medication, yes. That was part of my hypothesis, was pain, right? So let's pick that one. What was my other hypothesis? Alteration in appetite, right? So my second nursing diagnosis would be give IV regular insulin. That's not his problem right now. He's got a history of diabetes type 2, right? Uh, because of his appetite, he could, loss of appetite, he could be dehydrated, and, and so let's start some fluids. So those are my two interventions I'm going to do, pain and start an IV fluid. Now, what are the parameters to monitor? When I click on here, I have temperature hourly. We don't need to do that hourly. His wife said he was having a low-grade fever. And remember, this is the ER. Hemoglobin level, not necessarily right now. That's a history of diabetes, uh, blood glucose level. Let's do ultrasounds for his gallbladder. And let's do liver function because his liver is in the same area as his gallbladder. We want to see if he's built up any toxins or if it could indeed maybe be his liver. We don't know that yet. We're going to rule out liver. Uh, those are the two organs in the right upper quadrant. So here you have it. So as you can see, we picked a potential condition. We picked two nursing actions, and we picked two parameters to monitor. Now, remember, when you call me and have me tutor you, I'm going to help you with all this. I'm going to help you with all six steps of the clinical judgment measurement model.
So, because we picked out the condition, we were able to pick out the nursing actions. What part of the clinical judgment model does the nursing actions fall under? Take action, right? And uh, parameters to monitor, what uh, part of the clinical judgment model does that fall under? Planning or generate solutions, right? I'll help you with all six steps. So let's read the directions. Did we follow them? Select from the choices to identify one condition we did that. The client is most likely experiencing two actions that the nurse would take to address that condition and two parameters that the nurse would monitor to assess the client's progress. We answered this question in its entirety. Let's click Submit. And it is correct. When you take uh, the, the NCLEX will not show you if you're correct, but when we do practice questions, I will tell you that you're correct. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of next generation questions out there. This is why you need to contact me and we will tutor. I have my own questions that I will ask you when we tutor and we're going to make sure we tackle this. I actually enjoy these type of questions. And then we'll go over the rationale, why they're right, and we'll go over strategies. That's the important thing. When I tutor you, we're going to go over strategies on how to answer bow tie questions. Mm -hmm.